Hey, my sweet goats, welcome to another video. Look, for the last five years, Feminist Frequency, a brand founded by Anita Sarkeesian, has been producing statistical breakdowns of gender representation in video games presented at E3, which is arguably gaming's largest week of the year. And of course, their findings are never presented in a positive light, although I feel like they really absolutely should be because shit is just getting better and better year after year. This year, they looked at 126 games presented by some of the many publishers that we already know, and of course, some independents. And out of those 126 games, apparently, only six focused on female leads, whereas 28 focused on males, and the rest provided multiple options, which is the, the one thing that I really want you guys to kind of fixate on in this video. Essentially, what I'd like to point out is that there's a very noticeable trend in gaming where developers are opting into providing players more choice instead of sending them on a route with a fixed female lead or a fixed male lead. Ultimately, what we're going to remember about the end of this generation is player choice and player agency, and what the next generation is going to be all about is player choice and player agency. But you know what I feel like doing? I feel like looking at this shockingly low number of games featuring female leads. Is this a number that we gotta worry about? Long story short, no, it, it really isn't, okay? But let me go ahead and explain why. To start, we got Wolfenstein New Blood, all right? Two female leads in a game that is part of a franchise that's synonymous with gaming. I mean, if you're a gamer, you have heard of Wolfenstein. It is a cultural landmark of sorts. Wolfenstein was one of the first shooters that I ever played, okay? Doom was the first, but Wolfenstein was one that followed afterwards. I remember bringing a copy of the shareware version of, of Wolfenstein on a three and a half floppy inch drive to school to just go ahead and play through the demo, the, 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 which I think was what, the first like 10 levels or something like that. Wolfenstein, one of the most recognizable franchises in gaming history now has two female leads. That is a huge win and I believe has maximum social impact. And then we have Control, a game developed by Remedy Entertainment, the same studio that came out with Max Payne and Alan Wake. Now I haven't played much of Alan Wake, but I grew up with Max Payne, all right? And I know that Control is a game that is highly anticipated. So if this game isn't a dud, it is also gonna have maximum social impact. And it's great that there's a female lead there. I'm gonna keep going with this list, but what I'm really trying to get at here is that even though the number of female leads in games is small, the games that are coming out with the female leads are big games. They're not small games, They're not games that people are just going to be ignoring. They're games that are part of well-established franchises. And then you got The Last of Us Part 2, and I loved The Last of Us. And The Last of Us has a already well-established female lead. It is going to be absolutely incredible. It is going to be a game that is going to be so, so, so well-received. Maximum social impact, guys. So now we're going to go ahead and return to player choice here because I want to look at this actual graph here. Video game protagonists by gender, 2015 to 2019. The number of games at E3 with female protagonists is lower this year than it has been in some previous years. Why did they got to lead with that? I mean, I, I actually know why they got to lead with it. I mean, the, the name of the, the publication is called Feminist Frequency, so it just makes sense that that, that would be their shtick. But if you also look here, uh, I mean, it's not just uh, it's not just just female leads that have been lower. It's also it's also male leads. Male leads has dropped to 21%. The previous year is at 25%. Okay, and uh, if you actually look, the option for the option for multiple you know genders. It has increased year after year, with the exception of last year, where it dropped to 50% after 2017, which was 52%. But now it's up to 66%. 66% of games presented at E3 from the games that they picked offer you the choice to be whoever the f you want to be. Isn't that beautiful? That is the future, guys. This whole bar in the future is going to be blue. Nobody's going to care about 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 whether you're a female or a male. It's always going to be a custom tailored experience just for you. And games are just going to be developed from the ground up with both genders in mind or whatever gender in mind or no genders in mind or whatever. Any option. It'll give you the option. You will have the options. I'm telling you guys, video games are getting crazier and crazier year after year. And they're and, and they're and they're not showing no signs of stopping. No signs of stopping at all. Okay, so you're going to have people like this making these graphs to make you mad. But I'm telling you guys, don't get mad. Be happy. Rejoice. Video games for everybody. Video games for everybody. Well, that's about all I really wanted to talk about. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to go ahead and leave a like. Hit the sub button. Ding the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't let you know that I've uploaded a video. And of course, 
If you, if you really found that this video was valuable to you, feel free to go ahead and share it with a friend. If you want to see me on a more regular basis, feel free to go ahead and check me out at twitch.tv slash King, where I stream very, very often. Until next time, I love you. Bye.